There are many different components to movies that must fall perfectly into place in order for them to be good. Because simply put, there are a million different ways things can go wrong in the making of a movie, as there are so many different people and aspects involved that must all do their job correctly, and sometimes exceptionally at that, or else the entire film will inevitably become a mess. In other words, the making of a movie has more working parts to it than a giant machine, and if just one little piece is misplaced or malfunctions, the entire thing will fall apart. And since I am a writer myself, having written quite a few books in my day, I tend to like focusing on the writing side of things in my videos, going over how characters work, narrative structures, and other aspects to movies that mostly have to do with how the story is written. But today, I'd like to do something a little different and focus on another, but no less important, aspect to filmmaking, with that being editing. Because simply put, a movie can have the greatest story ever, the most perfect performances the actors have ever given, beautiful cinematography, wonderful sound, and everything else you can think of. But if it isn't well put together, or edited, then it'll all be destroyed in the final product. Now, please do note that there will be spoilers for the movies I'll be bringing up ahead, so in case there's something you don't want ruined, you might just want to be on the lookout. There will be no other spoiler warnings in this video. So at first one might wonder, why exactly is editing so important? Well, mainly because it's not only the point where a movie is put together, but how that movie is put together at that. It's when all the individual components of a film are finally put together to make a coherent narrative. Everything from deciding which take of a scene is best, to making sure that anything dubbed in is in sync with the footage they have, and a hundred other things must be decided during this stage. And this even extends to how the footage is framed as well. Seriously. There are so many great shots in cinema that were only thought up in post-production by the editors or director after the fact and easily could have been missed. That's even why there's the old adage that certain movies were saved in the editing room, which includes the original Star Wars movie itself. And it is true. The original cut of the movie wasn't all that great, and it was only by the editors cutting it down that it was turned into the beloved classic that everybody knows today. Though, to be fair, what happened with Star Wars is actually standard practice, as that was only a rough cut that was almost certainly going to be subjected to further editing. It just so happened that it was subjected to all the perfect editing, which only further shows how important the process is. But a more accurate example of a movie saved in the editing room would actually be Caddyshack. Now, I already got into all of this in another video, which you can find a link in the description to, but to sum it up here, due to a ton of improvising and coming up with random stuff on the spot, the original cut of the movie was four and a half hours long, unwatchable, and had absolutely no plot. And it was only after a professional comedy editor was brought in that the movie was not only shortened, but was able to have something of a plot to boot, which allowed the writers to make an ending to suit it. So once again, Editing alone managed to take an unwatchable, incoherent mess and turned it into a comedy classic. But for a more hands-on example of this, take a look at the movie Legend, 
the 1985 fantasy film directed by Ridley Scott. Because honestly, this would be the perfect movie to watch for anybody who wanted to get a feel for the importance of editing, as it famously has three cuts to it, all of which are pretty different in nature. Because not only are their entire scenes deleted and restored depending on the cut, but many are also edited differently as well. And it's in this department in particular that the director's cut is the superior version, especially compared to the theatrically released American version. And for just one example of that, take the scene where Darkness is trying to seduce Lily. Now, for the most part, this is one scene that's more or less the same across all versions, but it's what happens at the end that's noteworthy. Because in every version, Darkness offers Lily his heart, his soul, and his love. And she replies simply with a questioning, Love? Implicitly asking if he's capable of that, or even knows what it means. And his only reply is to get a look of existential dread on his face as if he's realized she's just called his bluff that he didn't even know was a bluff. Really, it's a brilliantly written and filmed scene, but let's stay focused on the editing here. Because the point here is, in the American version of the scene, after Lily says, Love? It cuts to darkness giving that look, and then immediately cuts to the setting sun. In the director's cut, however, after focusing on his face for a few seconds, it slowly fades out to show the sun. And not only does that look much better, as it helps sell darkness's existentialism a lot more by lingering on his face longer, but it's also a lot more thematically significant as well because the sun is the only thing that can destroy darkness, and as we later see in the movie, his determination to have Lily's love, which is something he knows nothing about, is what allows him to be destroyed by the sun. So by editing the scene like that, it almost makes it look as if darkness is realizing, if only for a brief moment, that his futile quest for Lily's love will only end in his own destruction. Honestly, it's quite a beautiful bit of visual storytelling, and is completely lost in the American version because of the way it was edited. Though what also helps sell that in the director's cut is Tim Curry's incredible acting, but I already got into all of that in another video, which you can also find a link in the description to, so I won't dwell on that here. The point is, that's only just one example of how Ridley Scott majorly improved the movie when given free reign with the director's cut. And I would once again recommend anybody who was interested in the craft of editing to watch the different cuts of Legend. Because, like I said before, since all the cuts are different, it really puts into perspective just how significant and impactful editing really is on movies. Particularly because when done right, it can really help sell the emotional impact of even the most mundane of moments, as the aforementioned scene even proves. Darkness's reaction carries a lot less weight in the American cut because it just cuts away from him, while the director's cut is able to make the whole thing feel a lot more significant. The point is, good editing can be downright crucial to having the more emotional moments in a story land, especially when told visually. Now, there are many classic examples of this that I could bring up, but instead I would like to highlight something more obscure, but no less perfectly done. And that would be from the 1943 musical Stormy Weather. 
And just for a brief overview first, so you'll understand the significance of the scene I'm about to focus on, Stormy Weather is a fictional autobiography of its lead actor, Bill Bojangles Robinson, who, for those of you who don't know, was an extremely popular African-American dancer in the early 1900s that was so good he was idolized by Fred Astaire himself who also called him the greatest dancer to ever live. But to try and stay on topic, the point is that the movie is much more of a celebration of African American performers of the day than focused on a plot. However, one plot point that's given a bit of attention is Bill falling in love with a singer named Selena Rogers, played by Lena Horne, but eventually going their separate ways after realizing they want different things out of life. Again, there isn't too much focus placed on this between all the musical numbers, but it's done well enough. So then we get to the scene in question, where Bill decides to go see Selena perform at a nightclub for the first time in years. Now, unaware that he's there, Lena Horn starts singing the title number, Stormy Weather, and about halfway through suddenly spots him. And once again, the way this silent reunion plays out is extremely well edited to help the audience feel the maximum amount of emotion possible. Because first of all, you'd expect the scene to cut directly to him the moment she sees him, but it doesn't. Instead, it stays focused on her for a few seconds to capture her reaction to seeing him, and then it cuts to him. And honestly, the look on his face says it all. Then it cuts back to her in a close-up this time, and it's clear that she feels exactly the same way he does. And again, What's particularly impressive here is that all of this is done without them exchanging any dialogue and only using visuals. But once again, the way it's edited, along with Bill Robinson and Lena Horne's perfect acting, allows the audience to feel the true impact of that moment. In other words, the apologetic look of regret on both of them is more effective than if there was a whole scene dedicated to the two breaking down and apologizing to each other. And it all comes down to the way the scene was edited. Because if it had been edited differently, it most likely wouldn't have been nearly as effective. Though once again, the performances by both Robinson and Horn also deserve a lot of credit in why that scene works as well as it does. Now, as I noted before, on the whole, the movie doesn't actually focus on their romance too much, but the point still remains that that moment works as well as it does in part because of the way it's edited. Especially because, even if you know nothing about the characters, it's clear just from the way that plays out that there's some kind of history between them that they clearly regret. And that is how to do good editing. Because it allows both the actors and the movie in general to convey everything that needs to be conveyed and when done exceptionally well, adds even more layers to it at that, like the aforementioned example from Legend did. Okay, so hopefully these few examples I've given have helped paint a coherent picture of just how important editing really is to movies. Because in addition to the movies that have famously done it very well, I could also go over plenty of movies where the editing was notoriously terrible, but I won't go there because I believe I've already made my point. All I'll really say in that regard is if a movie is not well edited, then that's almost worse than a movie that's badly written. Because bad writing just means the audience is watching a bad story play out. Bad 
editing means the audience is bound to get confused very quickly and not understand what the heck is going on. Basically, at least passable editing is a must. Because if it's truly bad, then the movie in question is doomed to be an incoherent mess. There's simply no way around that. It was even partially for this reason that famed director Stanley Kubrick was said to have been fascinated with the art of editing because he said it was pretty much the one aspect of movies that is exclusive to film. And that is true in many ways. Only in visual storytelling is something like editing even possible. And if it doesn't do a good job at that, it can easily ruin the story all on its own, even if everything else about it is very well done. Now, please do note here that I am by no means an expert on this topic. I have no formal training in the art of editing, and everything I have brought up in this video is simply from my experiences in watching movies. So please feel free to take or leave everything I've said here as you wish, as I was only trying to give a very basic rundown of why editing is so important and give good editors their due credit. And all I can say is, I hope I did that job well enough. But either way, the point is that a movie having good editing is just as important as having a good script. And when it's exceptional, it can add a lot more nuance than it otherwise would have had. But conversely, when it's done wrong, it'll ruin any chance the movie has of being good. So again, while there are many aspects to making movies, editing may just be one of the most important ones overall. Alright, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. So now I'd like to hear what you guys think. Do you think good editing is one of the most crucial aspects to making a movie as good as it can possibly be? Or do you believe that lies in the writing and that I'm giving it too much credit? Please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And please don't feel obligated to agree with me just because you watched this video. You are entitled to your own opinion, and if you think the examples I brought up were horrible ones, that's absolutely fine. And thank you all for watching. I very greatly appreciate it. And I hope to see you all next time.